Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD744. So today, guys, we'll be doing my Europa League final preview, guys, for this year, guys. So, man, what a Europa League final we have. Adelanta versus Bayer Leverkusen, the Europa League final for 2024, man. And who would have predicted this final, man, at the start of the season for Europa League? Because I know a lot of people probably predicted Sevilla, probably predicted Liverpool to be in the final. Maybe even potentially as the season went on, you know, maybe some of the Champions League teams like Milan, you know, Leverkusen, you know. And at the start of the season, I don't think anyone predicted Adelante to Leverkusen. And that's what makes this final so intriguing is that this final for me is a very close final, a very interesting final. Because in terms of the three finals that we have this year, this might be the cl most closely matched final we have of the three. Of course, I'll still... Do my other two previews. You guys will see that in a few weeks' time. But this final for me, we could have the most entertainment and most fun because these two teams are very well coached. Very well coached. And that's what I like about this final is that this final is so amazing. Adelante is looking to achieve history by winning their first European trophy ever in their club. As well as the fact that this team doesn't have a lot of trophies in general. And for Leverkusen, they're looking to win another Europa League title. The last time they did was 1988. So this will be like the first time they won a Europa League in the modern era. As well as the fact they're trying to complete the undefeated trouble. Because yes, at the time of recording this video, they still haven't lost a game. They still haven't lost a game. And that is still mind-boggling to me that they still haven't lost. So Leverkusen are still trying to do the unthinkable by winning the trouble. Okay? So now, let's talk about... Um, Gasprin, Gasprin. I mean, the guy has been unbelievable as a tactician. He's got Adelante to where they are right now. Because remember, this is the longest-serving Serie A coach right now. In right now, which is insane, because he's taken the over the times where they're in the relegation battle. They got relegated, went to Serie B, came back up, and he's gradually built this Adelante team to get European football. Remember, nineteen and twenty. I think that was the first season. Oh, sorry, I think it was the 18-19 season. They got to the Europa League. You know, that was the first time they got to European football in their history. They won the Champions League, 1920, the first season Champions League, and managed to get to a quarterfinal appearance. And we're a few minutes away from making the semifinals had it not been for PSG's late comeback. Gasparini's done an amazing job with this team. This team is where they're at because of him. He is the reason why Adelance is, is here. Because let's be real, guys. When you look at the roster that Atalanta has, it's very average. There's not a lot of world-class players on this team. Many of the players on Atalanta probably would not start for most of the top teams in the world. And that's what makes this Atalanta team special, is that they don't need those world-class players to gel out. A lot, a bunch of average players, and this very good team, can make this team work. I mean, they got to the Europa League final, and they've taken down some heavy hitters. Heavy hitters, and some of the best teams in the world, like Liverpool. Liverpool. This team went to Anfield and destroyed Liverpool at Anfield. Remember, Liverpool don't lose at Anfield that much at all. And the fact that he managed to do it against Jurgen Klopp, who is arguably considered one of the best coaches of all time, is an incredible achievement. And what makes Gasparini so good is that the guy is very good with his tactics. The guy is very smart. He plays counter-attacking football. He uses his wing backs. And as sometimes those wing backs can be false wing backs. The guy it does um, pressing with his team. The team does gig and press. They are very well coached, very well organized. And I think this Adelante team can cause problems in Leverkusen. Because yes, they're the underdogs. I think many of us know that they're underdogs in this final. But because of how good Gasparini is a coach, they could punch above their weight. Because let's be real, guys. Adelante, for most of the season, has been underdogs. They haven't really they haven't really defeated teams where they're uh, teams that they were the favorites. Maybe you could argue against Marseille because Marseille, how bad Marseille had been this season because let's be real, Marseille have been awful this season. I mean, Aubameyang is pretty much carrying that team. I call that team Aubameyang FC. That's what I call Marseille. But other than that, I mean, Sporting, like they were not expected to beat Sporting. Most people expect that Sporting to win because of what um, uh, Ruben Amorim has done with the team. And remember, Sporting won the Portugal Liga this season. They won the Liga Portugal. And, you know, they have an insane striker, Gokores. You know, they even topped the group at Sporty in it. So I think for Adelanto, what I'm trying to say here is that this team is very well coached, very well organized. And I think this team can cause problems to Leverkusen in the final. So, and you have to give credit to Gasparini. Gasparini for me is one of the best tacticians in the world right now. 
And I think many of the top teams in the world that are looking for coaches should consider him. They should consider him. In fact, I would even take him at Barca. I genuinely would. I know that might surprise some of my Barca fans are watching this and may be like, why are you saying this? The guy has been very good tactically, man. He's a good tactician, and I would take him at Barca in a heartbeat. Moving on, let's talk about some of the players. This Adelante team have some ballers. They they have some ballers. Let's look at Skamaka. Skamaka is a player that people mocked, people made fun of at West Ham. And now look what he's doing right now. He's got Adelante to the first European final. He's been influential in that sense. The guy with his hold-up play, with his goal-scoring ability. The guy's just been unbelievable as a striker. And this is a guy that looked like a flop under David Boyes at West Ham. And you see what I'm talking about, right? Well, Gasparini can make these players that look so bad and make them into world beaters. And he's got Skamaka into that. Another player that kind of flopped in the Premier League was, Skim- uh, was Adama Lukman. People don't really remember Lukman at Fulham. Lukman wasn't really that great at Fulham. But, and people remember Lukman for most for that penalty miss he had, where he tried to, I think, chip the keeper. It was awful penalty. Awful penalty. And look what he's doing right now. He's got, he's, Lukman's played a vital role in getting Adelanta to Europa League. Final. I remember this guy also came out clutch for Nigeria in the AFCON. He got Nigeria to the AFCON final. So Lukman has done an influential job on this team. They look at Scalvini. Scalvini, one of the best young center backs in the world right now in Serie A. He's been fantastic. He's so amazing on the ball. His tackles are amazing. His distribution, his ball playing ability is amazing. And I think this guy could be a next big center back for Italy. Italy, man, you guys should maybe look for him for your Euros. I'm just saying. Then obviously you've got Coop Miners. Coop Miners has been amazing. Coop Miners, the way he's been able to control the midfield, he's been amazing as a player. And we know, and he's just been fantastic. His goal scoring ability is also unmatched. And I feel like it's not a lot to see. There are some players. There are some players in this team. Also, look up for Musso. Musso is a great shot stopper. I rate him highly. And I think he's a great shot stopper, man. Good shot stopper. Now, we talk about Xabi Alonso. Xabi Alonso. I mean, what is there to say? This guy, you can make an argument he's one of the best coaches in the world right now. Because of what he's done with this Leverkusen team. Because let's be real, guys. This Leverkusen team shouldn't be where they're at right now. They shouldn't be able. They shouldn't be in a Europa League final. They shouldn't be in the DFB Pokal. They shouldn't have been able to win the Bundesliga. Because what all Leverkusen's been knowing is for that 2002. And for those who don't know what happened in 2002, this is a team that screwed up a trouble. They were on course for winning the treble, and they lost all three competitions. And that's what they're known as, Neverkusen. Now, people are calling them never losing <laughs> because of how the fact they haven't lost yet. They still haven't lost a game this season, and it's unbelievable. The amount of late goals Leverkusen have been doing has been unbelievable. And Javi Alonso is the heart and soul for that. The guy has been unbelievable with his tactics. He's got this team to play expansive football, play beautiful attacking football, and the way that they keep pressing the teams and making, so when you create so many chances, you're bound to score. And that's what makes this Leverkusen team so good, is that this team can create so many chances for any given moment, from the beginning of the game to the last minute of the game. And I think for Leverkusen, man, Jean Milan's has been amazing. Because remember, when he came in, they were fighting relegation. Now, they probably would have survived relegation, um, you know, with another competent manager. But I don't think that another, another manager could have got them sixth. And the first season came in midseason. Leverkusen finished sixth, got to the Europa League semifinals, lost to Roma by a narrow margin, only 1-0. And you can make an argument they should have probably made the final if it wasn't for Roma being super defensive. And now this season, he got revenge against Roma, got them to the Europa League final, and, you know, now also won the Bundesliga. So this is insane, man, what Javier Lanza has done with this team. Now let's look at some players that this team this team has got. This super team. you got Grand Shack. Granitschak. I mean, this guy has been unplayable at times. The way he's been able to control the midfield with his line breaking passes. Okay, I'm trying to move. Oh my god, what am I doing? Sorry. Uh trying to move my webcam here. Uh just bear with me. Okay, I think this is good. Okay, this is good. This is good. Sorry. Uh Granitschak has been amazing. His line breaking passes, his ability to his ability to control the midfield. The guy's been unbelievable. Like, this is a guy that people criticize at Arsenal. For saying this guy doesn't have commitments to this club. This guy is a coward. He threw the captain's armband. And now look where he's at. He's got Leverkusen. It's the first ever uh, Bundesliga title in history. And could potentially win a treble. 
a undefeated treble at the same time. What a redemption this is from Gran Xhaka. Because for me, Gran Xhaka, for me, is one of the most criminally underrated players. Maybe you could save all time. You can maybe save all time. I know that might seem a stretch, but you can maybe say all time because of what he's doing with this Leverkusen team because he has been so unbelievable for his hold-up play, his distribution, his line-breaking passes and everything. They got Patrick Schick. You can't forget about him. People are going to forget about him. People are going to talk about Victor Boniface. And Boniface has been good too. Don't get me wrong. But what Schick has done has been so unbelievable. The fact he's been able to score so many late goals from losing positions has been unbelievable. This guy deserves a bow, deserves a statue, because the amount of late goals the guy has scored has been unbelievable. He has to be. For me, I'm interested to see who's going to start in the final. Is it going to start uh, uh, Schick or Boniface in the final? Then, obviously, you got Florian Woods. I mean, he is one of the best young players in the world right now. The guy has been unbelievable. His goal-scoring ability, his distribution, his intelligence as a young kid. And remember, this guy that had an ACL injury, I think, um, what was it, uh, uh, last year, I think. Uh, the guy's recovered very well. And now, look where he's at. He's one of the best players in the world. And, guys, he could potentially win a Ballon d'Or. He could. I'm not saying he will. There's a strong possibility he might be able to. It depends if he can secure this treble and maybe get Germany to win the Euros. Then obviously got Grimaldo. Grimaldo has been amazing. The guy has been amazing as a left back, and he came in a free this summer. The way he's been able to score those free kicks, his goal scoring ability as a left back is unbelievable. Now his defensive game is a bit sketchy. I don't think defensively he's that great. His attacking though, his attacking outbreak is insane. Is insane. So now that we talked about the players that you should look out for for this team. Now let's talk about the tactics and kind of key selections. So when I look at this game, I think it's very evident what both teams are going to try to do in this final. I think Leverkusen, for me, is going to be the team that's going to be playing more uh, attack-minded. I think they're going to be playing the one with more possession-based. I think they're going to uh, play in a 4 2 3 one Now I'm interested to see what Javi Lanz is going to do in this final. Is he going to start Koval or Redeki? Because Koval has been the Europa League goalkeeper from what I understood, and Redeki has been the main guy. But this is the Europa League final. Do you still make? Do you still start Kovar in this final? Now Kovar has been great. Kovar has been amazing for what he's been doing for Leverkusen. Do you make that big decision? Do you bench Kovar in this final? And then I was talking about earlier. Do you bench Victor Boniface for this final? Because that's going to be interesting as well. And for Leverkusen, the rest of the team is going to pick itself out. Um, I do have some concern with Leverkusen defensively because defensively, as good as as good as their attack has been. Midfield wise, defensively they can look a bit sketchy. I've seen John the top make some mistakes, Tapsoba, Kosono. And as I talked about with Grimaldo, the guy's been amazing as a fullback. Attacking wise, defensively he's not very good. Defensively, he's not that great. So I think this is where Leverkusen can take advantage. The same goes for Frank Pong as well. And for Adelanta, they're gonna be looking to counterattack. And I think the key for Adelanta is to make sure they keep their composure. Keep their composure because they're gonna be playing at 3-5-2, and they're gonna be pushing with the wing backs further high up the pitch. And I think it's very important that Adelanta don't expose themselves too much because this Leverkusen team, when you give them enough space and time, they can they can punish you. We know what this Leverkusen team have been able to do. And I feel like for me, for Leverkusen, this will be the toughest opponent because, yes, Leverkusen defeated Roma. They defeated West Ham. They defeated quarterback. Adelanta, for me, tactically, is the best of those four teams. And remember, Leverkusen, as good as those wins were, they didn't destroy those teams. They didn't destroy those teams. It was close games. Like, quarterback was close. Like, that was could have gone close. West Ham was close. Uh, then, obviously, uh, Roma. Now, even though it was kind of close against Roma score-wise, they were the much better team. But they still should have scored more goals and should have finished off the tie. Whereas for Atalanta, they destroyed Atalanta, uh, sorry, Liverpool with pretty much ease. They destroyed Marseille. And so, I think for Atalanta, man, I feel like they might be more, they might be better suited for this final because they've already faced pretty tough opponents already en route to the final. Whereas Leverkusen, have they truly been challenged? That's the thing for this final. So it should be a good final, man. It should be a good final. So now, what's my prediction, guys? What's my prediction? Um, I'm gonna go with sorry, Adelanta three, Leverkusen two. I feel like for me, Adelanta is gonna win this game. And the reason why I think they're going to win this game is because of how good this team is structured. I think Leverkusen will give it a good go. I think they'll have their moments. But I think Leverkusen, for me, defensively look a bit a bit sus at times. And even though I am saying Leverkusen will score two goals, I think Adelante's defense is better than Leverkusen. And I feel like Adelante 
will thrive an extra ton. I think Adelance is going to take care of... I think they're going to do it. I could even see this going to Pens. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, but I don't think it's going to go to Pens. But if it does, that'll be very interesting. And yeah, I just think Adelance is going to do this, man. I just think Adelance is going to do this. I just think that for me, for Leverkusen, I think it'll be too much pressure. I think it'll be too much pressure to do this. And I feel like for Adelanta, because there's the fact there's really no pressure on them to do this, I think that's what's going to lead Adelanta to thrive in the occasion and everything like that. So whatever the case may be, though, it should be a good final. I'm very much looking for this final. Of course, remember, guys, next Wednesday after the game, we'll be doing a live reaction to the game, the trophy left, and discuss about this because this should be a great final, man. I hope you guys did enjoy this final, guys. Please, uh, sorry, Amy. Hope you guys did enjoy this video, guys. Please remember to like and subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.